This is a web app written in Python. When I set a malicious cookie on the website and refresh the page, we get code execution. Essentially, we get access to the entire server. Here's how we do it. As you might have guessed by now, the cookie that we set was not gibberish. In fact, it was carefully crafted to do one specific job, and that was to give me full control over the server. The attack that you just saw is called insecure deserialization attack, where the server tried to unpack some data that I provided, which triggered my malicious code to run. That's on a high level. Just so you know, exploiting insecure deserialization vulnerabilities in Python is relatively easy, but it gets complicated when you're dealing with languages like PHP, Ruby, or Java, because they involve a lot more complexity, more constraints, and banging your head against the desk for about five hours or so. So it's better if we just start off with something that simple like Python. With that out of the way, to understand this attack, we must be familiar with a couple of concepts, such as serialization and deserialization. I think it's best understood with an example. Let's say you were playing Cyberpunk 2077 and your character in game looks something like this, but also in memory it looks something like this, merely just an object full of values. But something to think about is the fact that these values are stored on your RAM. Once you close the game, it's gone forever and you don't want that. You want to be able to save the game and restore it back sometime later. The process of converting these objects into a stream of bytes that can be stored is called serialization. And the reverse process of converting these stream of bytes from a file or a network back to an object is called deserialization. Serialization has many applications. People use it for machine learning. Basically, let's say you have a trained model. You can store that in a file and then load it back whenever you want, saving a lot of time. Web applications also use them for storing complex session objects as cookies so that the server can you know, simply read the session related information from the cookies instead of reading it from the database or memory store just to save a bunch of cumulative database reads. Like I mentioned earlier, the vulnerability is called insecure deserialization, which means it happens at the time when the bytes or the stream of bytes are converted to an object on the server side. So what can possibly go wrong when we deserialize arbitrary input provided by the user? Well, let's see. Let's try to serialize and deserialize something in Python just to get a good understanding of it. To help us with the deserialization and the serialization part, there's actually a module in Python that we can use, and it's called pickle. So let's go ahead and create a class called user, which has two properties in it. One is name, the other one's age. It's also gonna have one other function called summary, which is gonna give us the summary of the, the object, basically. Now let's go ahead and create a class out of it. We're gonna name the user Keanu Reeves and the age, um, the last time I checked it was like, what, 490? Yeah, let's go with that. So now we have the object called Keanu. Let's serialize this and try to print out the stream of bytes. We can do that with the help of a function called dumps, again, provided by the module pickle. We can specify the object that we want to serialize as a argument for this function and we get back the output, which is the stream of bytes. Now the stream of bytes can be transferred of the network to other machines or even store it as a file on a disk. Pretty useful stuff. In case you want to disassemble the stream of bytes, you can use a module called pickle tools, also provided by Python, which gives you a quick disassembly of all the mnemonics and stuff like that. Now let's go ahead and deserialize this stream of bytes to get back the original state. So we'll store the stream of bytes into a variable and feed this variable into another pickle function called loads, which is gonna deserialize for us. Now what comes out of it is the original state of the object. We can confirm this by actually calling the summary function on that specific object. And indeed, it's a replica, an exact replica of the original object.
Now the question is, why is deserialization a problem? Well, as you can see, we're essentially converting a stream of bytes to an object. We got to be careful when we do that, especially when we're accepting arbitrary input. The problem is that if the user's input contains some malicious serialized data, and this data will be deserialized on the server side, essentially turning the user's input into an object. But what if these objects contain special methods that can actually help you execute any arbitrary code on deserialization? Well, that sounds like a problem to me. To test this out, we're going to create a simple class and we'll call it nat. The class will have one method, which is called reduce. We'll write our malicious code in here. But what exactly is the reduce function? This post on Stack Overflow will answer that question. Whenever you try to pickle an object, essentially means serializing the object, there will be some properties that may not be able to serialize well. For example, that would be an open file handle. So in those situations, pickle won't know how to handle it. The way that you can let Python know how to deal with these sorts of properties is by using the reduce function. Basically, it's a function that's actually called when the object is dumped or serialized. This reduce function should be returning a tuple in which the first value should be a callable like a function and the second value should be the arguments for that function. So inside this function, we'll import the OS module and then we return the OS.system as the first value of this tuple so that it's actually called during the deserialization process. And then we supply the command that we want to execute as the second value of the tuple, which is also a tuple. In our case, we'll execute the ID command. And also, by the way, the os.system function is used to execute any system commands. So all you have to do is just provide a string and it's gonna execute that for you. All there's left is to create an object out of this class, serialize the whole thing, and let the vulnerable application deserialize it. Now let's confirm if our payload works by deserializing the stream of bytes. And it seems to work. Earlier, you saw that I performed the attack on the web server. Let's go ahead and do that again. Now it's almost the same attack as what we just did manually, but it's in the context of a web application. Here, the cookies are storing session-related information, which is serialized. That's our attack vector. Right, getting back to our little attack. Just to make things a bit more interesting, I've crafted the payload to be a reverse shell, which means I should get back a reverse connection. One more thing to note is that the server encodes the session cookie with a base64 encoding, so we have to do the same. So let's go ahead and set the cookie and send it away. And we get a shell, a very satisfying shell. I'll see you in the next one.